Baby, be in love with your fantasies. I can be a star, make a sky so bright. Welcome to my dungeon. This is ecstasy. Let me play the fantasy. What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we, we back like we, we never left. left. We back in a building. We had to pull up the right way. That's the only way to pull up. Yeah. And uh, today, today, we're going to be checking out Andrew Tate going going at it uh, in regards to Pierce Morgan. They're going at each other. Everybody argues with Pierce Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. You think so? I think so. A lot of times. But though Andrew Tate, he had a lengthy interview on Pierce Morgan. Okay. Uh, we're going to be watching actually like a little 10 minute. It's just like 10 minutes of them talking. Okay. All right. Let's Make check sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Join the family so Come you don't now. miss any videos from Asia and BJ. Absolutely. And let's jump into this video. Let's go. <laughs> Should young huh. men, though, all aspire to be like you? Should young men aspire to work very hard, have no criminal record, become multimillionaires, protect and provide for the women close to them, uh, be sovereign so they can stand up and have their own points of view in face of cancellation, be able to not be mentally intimidated when they go on national TV and there's traps set up for them? Yeah, I believe that confident, strong men who stand up and protect and provide for women are a good thing for the world and a good force for the world. And I don't think that I put a magic spell on anybody. I think there's a whole bunch of men in the world who understands my value. And if, if men grow up to be like me, you're gonna have a whole bunch of people with no criminal record, dedicated athletes, who protect and provide for the people close to them, are fantastic for the economy. And, we're, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not the worst influence out here, Piers. You have little Nas twerking on the devil on music videos, which our children are digesting. You have uh, drill artists singing about stabbing people to death in the middle of a knife crime epidemic. You have rabid uh, psychopaths on whether the right or the left announcing violence on the other side. You have all these insanities in the world. And because I sit here and say, I, yeah, perhaps, now you've, you've laid it out and it offended you, I understand. Me I didn't say it offended Okay, me. cool. I just read you the things. You read things that you said they could be offensive and some people are offended. Well, some people definitely were offended. Absolutely. That's fine. And, and honestly... I think some of the things you said were genuinely offensive and misogynist. Okay, so they offended you. And, and like actually, I, so like I said earlier, so they offended you, no, which is on. fine. I said they offended you, you interrupted me, and now you're saying they offended you, which is fine. And the, But the point <laughs> I'm trying to make is this. I'm not the devil. There are certainly well, worse people than me, and, I don't disagree and they exist. With that. And, and I'm saying that my core tenets for the people who don't understand me are self-accountability, mm -hmm. so I'm accountable for everything I've ever said. My core tenets are responsibility, so I'm responsible for everything I've said. My core tenets are traditional masculinity to a degree, which involves protecting and providing for women. And I'll make another point, another point here that's very, very, that's very, that needs to be said. The number of women who have stood up and stuck up for me is ignored. Thousands of women are making videos saying, I've met Andrew Tate, he's such a nice guy. I wish I had a man like Andrew Tate who felt responsible to protect and provide for me. You know what? I, I do belong to my husband, that's why I married him and I love him. We ignore the thousands of women who stood up and, and, and stood by me and said everything I said is true. And we're taking a very vocal minority who have taken the things I've said and are pretending to be absolutely and utterly devastated by them okay. for some reason. All right. I mean, time They're... out. Time out. Pierce had to call time out because he was getting embarrassed on his own show. Now, if you guys have a favorite quote from this entire interview, feel free to comment it down below so other people can hear it. Now, let's get back to the video. But there was also, I think, quite a disturbing piece that BuzzFeed did. And it talked about the, the negative impact. Real quick. Do you agree with what he's saying? That means like traditional values of like a, a water man. I think that's what like, I mean. Yeah, that's like the traditional. Definitely. If I'm being completely honest, I feel like every woman wants to feel like they're being protected by mm -hmm. their man. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, say whatever you want. I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I wanted somebody to protect me. Shoot, right. if I, you know, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and that and then, but, <laughs> I, but I don't know, maybe, maybe his. His words got taken out of context regarding some of the things that he was saying because some people felt that it was kind of misogynistic with some of the other things that he kind of said going into that. Like what? Just being like a provider for a woman, but still, I, I guess, feeling like, in a way, like, they're his, like, you're mine type of thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't you know, want to make, don't that, make me feel like I'm yours. That's how like, some, some people kind of twisted and kind of turned it. Yeah, that, that's I why mean, he's saying you know, all the thousands of women that kind of stuck up and spoke up for him, you know? Yeah, but what, I, I guess I'm just saying, like, what woman doesn't want to have a man that makes them feel like they're some type of protector for mm -hmm. them, number one. Right. W without, like, making it 
be more than what it is. Right. You just want to feel like you have a protector. Mm -hmm. And the yeah, other the other thing is what he said too as well. What? The protect and then provide. Oh, the, and, and provide. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't feel like anything is wrong with that, but, you know, and perhaps I, I would be okay with not being like the man being necessarily the provider. I, you definitely need to protect me, number one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because nowadays, I feel like it's not uncommon that women are the providers in their household. I, yeah. I just think that. I mean, not all, but n n it happens in, now. In, in, this, in, in this day and age. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Just say it. Just, just oh, Young, yeah. impressionable <laughs> male minds, when they've read or seen some of the more inflammatory things you've said, and they quoted, for example, Sandy, uh, 22, from Washington. My father's gone from a man who minored in women's studies in college, who was kind and in touch with his emotions, treated all people, men and women around him, with kindness, to a man who says that whenever he sees an effeminate male stranger, he gets an overwhelming urge to murder them. He loves podcasts, he listens to a lot of podcasts, I know he's listened to Andrew Tate. Whoa, 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 let's stop for a second. Let's be professional here, Piers, because you're a professional as yeah. am I. First, she said, did you say that my father went? She said, my father has Her father. That's a full-grown man. Mm -hmm. Firstly, so we're talking about my impact on children. You just talked mm. about full-grown man here. Secondly, I've never talked about murdering effeminate men in anything online ever, on, in any context ever. So I don't know why they have taken some random person I've never met in the world who's <laughs> full-grown, an adult, and come to their own conclusions who I've never met and lumped his name in with mine. That is absolutely unfair on every level. I didn't watch, I didn't read this what is BuzzFeed. Your view? I didn't read this BuzzFeed article, mm. but after hearing the first point, I know it's trash. Mm. That is complete garbage. What to is your, say what that is I'm your the view? reason this man believes what he believes. I have seen disgusting. a quote from you, and you can tell me what you feel here about this. Sure. Uh, you talk about people don't want to see men dressed up in dressy, I transgender. That's people. not exactly what I said. What, I did said you, what did you say? I said the reason I am so popular and I'm so famous is that there's a large contingent of men who don't want to wear makeup who still want to make money, go to the gym, be strong, drive a fast car, be traditionally masculine, and don't want to be shamed for that, and they don't want to be called toxic for that. That is the reason I'm so massively famous. That is what I said. What say. do you think of transgender people? That's nothing to do with me. I'm not transgender, and I don't understand the issue like they do. They are can you, do are you transphobic? They... Do, you, are, do you consider yourself that? Transphobic? What, af afraid? Uh, well, it kind of, yeah. You have I, don't live in, I don't live in fear, my friend. And I, I, I have no problem. You have a dislike of transgender people. I don't know any transgender people. Do you have a dislike of what they stand for, what they are? No. Why would I? I don't I, know. That's I'm not asking. my issue. Do you believe depression is a real thing? I believe that feeling depressed is real. I don't believe depression as a clinical disease is real, no. Really? If you feel depressed, I disagree mm. that you cannot affect it and change your life and take control and fix yourself and feel happier. I disagree with that. Do you think... Do you think I, I, ref I refuse to accept that there are people out there who cannot become happy, contented individuals. I refuse to accept we live in a world where God has created people who, no matter how hard they work and how good their life becomes, mm. can't be happy. I don't accept that. I accept that the universe is a very giving place and that God loves all of us. And if you try your best and you work hard, you can become a better person. And I also will argue with you, and I'll counter the point, that you sitting here on your platform telling people they have clinical depression, there's nothing they can do about it. I disagree with that. Wow, you see how... Look at look look at Pierce is looking at him. Because Ooh. because because depression is from a chemical imbalance in the brain. Like yeah. there's there's something that about something that nobody can do unless you, you obviously can do things to fix it and try to make yourself happy and put yourself in places that take you to your happy place. But if there's an imbalance, a chemical imbalance, a, a deficiency chemical in your brain that is not working properly, there is nothing that you can do about that. Yeah, and see, and that's what he's saying. He's saying. He he he's not falling for that, because he 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 right, said know, that that's what clinically he doesn't believe. In right? No, depression. I disagree with that. You know, I disagree. Well, counter the point that you sitting here on your platform telling people they have clinical depression, there's nothing they can do about it. It's far I didn't more say dangerous. That. Okay, well then, if they have clinical why depression, do you mis why do you misquote me? No, because you're you saying hate being misquoted. No, you're saying if people have clinical depression, that I they have, they have nothing a disease. to do about it. They go to a doctor and they get diagnosed cool. and they get help. Then I would argue the point that if it's somebody the opposite of what you just said, I said I would argue the point that if somebody has depression of any kind, whether it's clinical, whether it exists or not, whether they feel mm. depressed or not, whatever, that taking control of their life, taking personal responsibility, and working hard is always going to be the positive. Best. I haven't thing they seen too many interviews. I've seen maybe a handful of interviews where it seems like the guest that Piers Morgan brings on actually like takes over the whole interview, takes over the whole conversation. That's what it feels like right now. I just Pierce feel like kind he of has like, like let him have it. Well, he has very strong personality. I can see why people don't really maybe type if, A. If they didn't really care for him. They I can see why they don't because I don't. 
they for that reason. <laughs> How positive is it? Them. How so sitting here saying, I don't believe in clinical depression, you don't believe in depression. No, I don't. I believe that people can take control and fight against things. Right. I believe in personal sovereignty. Right. Fine. Good. So I'm, we agree. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Beers are on my side, oh, afraid wow. of being cancelled along with me. And this is that little area where it's, you lose me. No, I don't lose you. You are, because, because Pierce, somebody with your Pierce, following says the thousands no of people, thing. the thousands of people who have emailed see, me saying, see my that right there? You're taking away I would be like, bro, shut up. You, uh, you're on my... You're like, okay, you're on my I don't really care how right you are or wrong, <laughs> okay? Shut up. <laughs> this is my show. No. I don't I'm, like that. That yeah. right there, that's too you too aggressive for me. Okay, you yeah. gotta go. He he's handing it to, to Piers Morgan because I seen Piers Morgan like really take take over interviews Look. and like calm people down. He not doing it right here. But or at least not yet. There is a way for you to come across and get your point across. I feel like he's he's being very assertive in what he's saying and very straightforward. There's nothing about what he's saying that I don't like. It's it's his energy. I don't. I'm not feeling. <laughs> okay, the, the, I'm not feeling hey, that energy. Say less. I don't like it. <laughs> I do not like. I don't like how I'm feeling it through the screen right now. I don't like him. Okay. <laughs> With your Pierce, following, the says thousands no of thing. people, the thousands of people who have emailed me saying my doctor told me I was clinically depressed and it's a disease that I have got in my brain and I can't be fixed. And I started listening to you and I realized that that's not the case and I can fix my own life. And you're the only person who has you, ever helped me. Oh, right. Thousands of people have emailed Andrew, me that exact think, email. If you think you are sick, he's saying thousands of people. I feel like there's maybe some people out there that had an epiphany, something changed in their life, that they were able to fix what, what, what they were able to fix mm -hmm. by based on what he's saying. Yeah. But that doesn't make, like you said, that doesn't make him right overall of yeah, his whole no, assessment on him, depression because, right. because someone has told you that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because depression is a very, very touchy, touchy subject for Absolutely. a lot of people. Yeah. Single-handedly curing people of clinical depression. You are living in cloud cuckoo land. I am reading the emails of people <laughs> who I have cured of clinical depression. Let me talk about Alex Jones, right? Yeah. Who I have a bit of history with. He tried to get me deported from the United States. Oh, did he? Yeah. What is your view of Alex Jones? I think that Alex Jones is a sovereign individual who, very much like the rabid left, deserves a chance to speak on his points of view. I think that the truth on issues is usually somewhere in the middle between two extremes. And I so think. So you think Sandy Hook was staged? I don't know anything about Sandy Hook. Really? You know, he's just been sued by the families for no. millions and millions. I have no idea. You don't know anything about it? No. So why would you support someone in public when you know nothing about the most infamous when thing? When have I supported him in public? You have supported him in public. I've been on his podcast. Yeah, but you said nice things about him. I say nice things about lots of people. What do you think about Alex Jones? I said nice things about you, Pierce. That's fine. <laughs> so, so you should. So, I'm a nice so the, I, I, to sit and say that I've been on a podcast and I say nice things about but him. But you said you support, support uh, you support his right to speak about things like Sandy Hook. I don't know Sandy Hook. I don't know. And you know say, what it was? Uh, it was a mass shooting of school children. Oh, okay, but to sit and. And he... It's actually no, no. Let's stop for a second. Please don't interrupt me. The, oh. Here's why you're. I know why you're good at your job. First, you interrupt people a lot, which is good. It's a good skill. Actually, and, you're very, and, you no, no. And, and then there no, you go. No. Prove me right. But here's exactly and the timing's what, good. Here's exactly what I do. I only interrupt people like you mm. when you either refuse to answer the question uh -oh. or answer a completely different one. Sure. And I want to remind you of what the question was. Fair enough. Or fair. when you misquote me back, which you've done repeatedly through the interview, where you say, you see, Piers, you agree with me. And the viewer who's been watching will go, no, he didn't. Cool. No problem. The other thing you do is you try and set these traps like now. So you're saying What's now, the trap you think I'm setting? You're saying that I agree with every single point of view a man has. I literally didn't say that. You're saying, well, you support Alex Jones. Why would and he, you misquote me? Because you're saying you support Alex Jones and you said he, you've been on his podcast and he said this. I don't know what... What do you think of Alex Jones? I, I don't know everything he said. What do you Pierce. think of him? I think... I think on his podcast, he was cordial. I think he was professional on his podcast. I've also done podcasts with rabid leftists and, and, and people who openly hate me. I do, Is it wrong? I do a podcast circuit. Okay. So it, and I don't know everything he's ever said. When somebody like and I don't know what so I don't know okay. what you're trying to say, get uh -oh. here I'm because I did a podcast. If you let me get a word in edgeways, I'll tell it's, you. It's it's pretty it's it's a it's a lame trick. See? I've done the guy's podcast. See what, I'm saying? what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's not even letting him talk, but <laughs> and you, and you, <laughs> and you on my show. I, that's what, but that's what I mean when I say I can see why people wouldn't. I don't know. I mean, I I do see what he's saying, and he's making really really valid points and everything that he's well, saying. Some things, yeah. Andrew Andrew Tate is making really good points, but I, I, you just attitude that he got? <laughs> he attitude? Got <laughs> Maybe he came to the show with it, you know? You never You're know. a little bit too aggressive for me with your, with your type A, okay, personality. <laughs> you got to go with all of that, okay? Calm down, sir.
Just saying. Oh my god. Yeah, but he he does have a lot of sense. <laughs> Clearly, I mean, and he knows what it is that he's trying to say. He's very assertive in in his in his explanations. What yeah. is he's trying to explain? So if you let me get a word in edgeways, I'll tell it's, you. It's it's pretty. It's it's a it's a lame trick. I've done the guy's podcast. I know him well. He was professional and courteous to me. When I meet somebody and they show me respect, I show them back. Respect. That's what I do, as I did with you. You respect him. I, if somebody shows me respect, I show them you respect back. So if Adolf, I don't Hitler, know if Adolf any... Hitler showed you respect, you'd respect him back. If at the, that's a stupid question, Pierce. It's not. It's a logical extension of your argument. No, it, if, if in 1931 I was walking through Germany and a man come up to me and said, sorry for bumping into you, I'd say, sorry, no problem, mate. Mm. I'd show respect back. What if, I don't know. What, what are you trying to say? That, I, 19... that I sanctioned the Holocaust? You literally just said, if somebody respects you, you respect them back I say, if somebody shows me respect, I show respect back. That's a good way to go through life. Mm -hmm. Whoever it is. If somebody shows me respect and is courteous to me, I'm courteous back. Yeah. Can it's it's a lame use... trick, Piers, and you're better than this. Not so let's move trick. on. Would you, it's, if it's lame, Putin, it's if lame and let's Putin move on. If Vladimir Putin had a podcast, would you go on it? Uh, sure. You would? Great. Okay, let me know what you're talking about. If Vladimir Putin had a podcast, fine, I'd go on it. Fine. If Joe Biden had a podcast, I'd go on it. If a feminist has a podcast, I'd go on it. If Piers Morgan has a podcast, I'll go on it. If Alex Jones... I mean, I don't see the point you're making. There's no point here. You're just you're digging, but there's nothing to find. Do you respect him? <laughs> Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? Do you think that 18, 19 year old women are more attractive than 25 year old women? I think there's attractive people. Uh, that's that's a loaded question. I don't know. Well, it's not really, is it? I, I can't. You know why I'm asking it. Of course I do, but I can't sit well, here and for say. For the benefit of viewers who don't know why I'm asking, you said this. In general, this is also one of the reasons men find youth attractive. You want to block the internet? I'll block the internet right effing now. The reason 18 and 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through less dick. People say, oh, you can't say oh. that, but yes, I can. A 19-year-old is more attractive than a 26-year-old woman, and I'll tell you why. Because that 26-year-old has talked to more guys, been to the club more times, been effed and dumped more times, more arguments, more mess, more for me to clean up. Oh. That <laughs> is misogyny. Why? Because you are encouraging a mindset about 25-year-old <laughs> women that makes them sound out to be infinitely less desirable than 18, 19-year-olds right? oh. and having effectively been having too much sex to be taken in a more respectful way. That would, well, firstly, even if that was the case, that wouldn't be misogyny. But well, what did you mean by what you said? That's not misogyny because it's not anti-women. I'm, I'm saying that an 18 or a 19-year-old woman would be more desirable. It's pretty anti-25-year-old woman. Anti-25-year-old women, we can argue, but not misogyny. Well, that's misogyny. So that's, then, that's, no, 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 it's not. Well, being anti any woman at all is misogyny. Mm. Not, when I'm, not when I'm saying that women are beautiful and attractive at a certain age and saying that age You're is saying 18, 19-year-olds are more attractive than 25 Well, then ageist, perhaps, but misogynistic, absolutely is that not. Is that but you just accepted it was misogyny? No, I didn't. You said it was misogyny. I'm telling you, no, it's not. So you don't think if you're saying slightly hateful things about a 25-year-old... That's not slightly hateful. Well, it is. You it's... think you, you say that to a woman's face if she's 25? It's not slightly hateful. When so you would go up to a 25-year-old oh. woman and tell her exactly what I've just read out. Why would I walk up to a random 25-year-old woman Because you said it in public on the that. internet and it's been listened to and watched by millions and millions of young, Correct. impressionable boys. Correct. There was a large panel. There was a conversation. Right. There was hours long of conversation. There were feminists attacking men for toxic masculinity and uh -oh. attacking me and saying things. And I said things back, which were going to antagonize But I think, them. see, I'm... I... <laughs> so, which you've done yourself a, a bunch of times. I think... If you want to see... He's there, baby. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, I was like, I feel like he just antagonizes somebody, but he's just said it before I could even... We didn't even get that far, but... <laughs> That just... <laughs> I like that little last part, though, them kind of going back and forth yeah. in regards to kind of Pierce poking at him about that misogynistic uh, comment that he made. I feel like it, it, that is somewhat misogynistic if you say that particularly. Yeah, way he's kind of I'm like, damn. That's a really, really damn. crappy comment to damn. say. Yeah. Not only that, but there are more women out there that, like, you know, and there are women out there that's only been with one guy. Like, what about those women? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, the one boyfriend because you're making a blanketed had. statement over like 25 yeah, you can't year old. Can't say that about every woman. woman. Yeah. And not to, I mean, there, I can go on and on. You got, yeah. I mean, granted, they, yeah, I think there, there's, there's probably a ton of women out there that's probably been through, okay, the, the whole block, okay. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's a ton more women out there that yeah, won't yeah. even give men the time of day because they don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And they're 25. Exactly that. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you don't want to get wrapped up in emotions and, and you've been I, through enough where I, it's like, I knew, I knew when we got done, I knew when we got done, that, that, that little part right there was going to get you, get you heated right there. That was going to get you moving right there. Oh, down. look, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about Andrew Tate, y'all. I don't really know. I don't, mm-mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the people title, do that. The, the, title <laughs> was, the, the title of the video was them arguing. 
kind of like Andrew Tate pretty much embarrassing Pierce Morgan and owning him. I really don't feel like he owned him. I really kind of feel like Andrew Tate really just kind of showed his his, his his personality, that type A personality it wants to take over the conversation, make sure you you don't let anybody else get a, a word in edgewise. Yeah. Uh, but Pierce Morgan, again, like I said, I just seen Pierce Morgan, he, you know, he, he'll put you in, in, in the seat. Well, and he, well, he, he like a shark. Well, yeah. A lot I, of times, sometimes like Pierce Morgan, but I, this time Pierce Morgan, he fell started. back a little bit. He did, but I mean, like when you're in a conversation with somebody that 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 does exactly that, like it almost makes you not even want to conversate. Think about it, like being in a you kind of saw that too. That yeah, kinda, it was almost like, bro, I can't even talk to you. Like you got disinterested. Yeah, I don't. I'm. This isn't a two way conversation. Yeah. In other words, you mm -hmm. want me to hear everything that you want to say. You want to counter everything that I say. Mm -hmm. Then you want to flip every. You know what I mean? And it's you just definitely like, want to be right. That's not the conversation so. that you want to have with somebody, especially when it comes to like political stuff like this, and you having these type of deep conversations. You can't get into a conversation with a person with a with a personality like that on a big even, platform like that. Too. Yeah, but even it, it makes for good TV though. Well, even if he's telling the truth, even what he's saying, his energy, like his persona, everything about him <laughs> there's just like there, it's just a hell no for me yeah. okay like it can, it, can, it can it can be a catalyst for a good interview though mm -hmm. outside of that no. you know like you said i, I could i could i, I could kind of tell throughout the whole interview this this 10, 10 minutes you was like ah uh, no by the end of that it was like no no check, i, I, I mean but like i said i mean it, in spite okay. of what i just said i mean he had a lot of good valid points and what he was trying to explain and what it was that he was trying to put out there and, and, and explain his point of view, you know, from his perspective when he was trying to explain his Pierce Morris. And granted, he said it in a way yeah. where it was just like, well, shoot, ain't no yeah. coming back from that. Yeah. But, but as he, as he, but as he, <laughs> as he continued to keep talking, though. Yeah, I was just like, bro, okay. just, the more you talk, I the more I, I, I don't like you. And maybe that's what Pierce Morgan allowed him to do. That's what I feel like he kind of did to a degree. He fell back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All I see is Macho's big round head I know. looking through the door, y'all. But this was good, babe. So y'all let us know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. Give For us sure. y'all's thoughts and opinions. What else do we need to see? Andrew Tate. Whew. Oh, and if you guys want to see more, more of this content too, check out uh, and subscribe to the to the other channel. Uh, it's Sean Daniel, uh, where we got this video from. We'll actually be putting the original video link in the description below. Yeah. Uh, so y'all tap in, check it out, drop a comment. Yeah. And um, I don't know what I was saying. And that's hey. it. <laughs> We're going to see y'all next time. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Bye. You all, you all right? Yeah. He, he, had, he had you disturbed, huh? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was about to just hit, hit the button. Okay. Okay.